I can do this all day. <laughs> My name's Jared Kirby. I'm a traditional fencing master. I'm also a fight coordinator for screen and stage. Today, we're going to watch some sword fights from different movies, and I'm gonna break down the authenticity of the fights that are being performed. I admit it, you are better than I am. Then why are you smiling? Because I know something you don't know. And what is that? I am not left-handed. We would not uh, be having this conversation if it wasn't for the Princess Bride. As a fight coordinator, you don't get much better than a fight like this. All of the rules that we have, it follows. You get character revealed throughout, the fight is extremely entertaining, the fight enhances the entire story. It's just brilliant as a fight coordinator. As a historical fencing master, I can just say that the moves are not the way that those swords would have been used. But when we step back and we look at the way a martial artist or a highly skilled swordsman would engage in a fight, that structure is there. It's completely possible to defend yourself against the 88 when 80 of them are just standing back and waving their swords in the air. That definitely makes it easier. Part of being a fight coordinator is that a, a lot of my study has gone into what really happens to the body with different kinds of wounds so that we can be very specific. For example, that first arrow seems to be entering uh, completely missing the heart but piercing the lung. Now, as long as that arrow is still in there, no problem. He would be able to keep fighting much like he did in that scene. Later on, you see him do a big overhand strike and that would be next to, to impossible with the left arm because of the muscle groups that have been uh, affected by that arrow. Errol Flynn and Basil Rathbone. One of the things that makes them really good in their sword fights is uh, at this day and age, we still have uh, studio men. Both of them are hired by the studio and their full-time job, if they're not actually shooting something, is to train in fencing and riding and, uh, and work in that way. Both of them were very accomplished uh, swordsmen. Uh, Basil Rathbone, much better than Errol Flynn. <laughs> One of the things that we need to start with is the, the basic idea of a two-on-one fight. One of the, the best places to be in this fight uh, starts off that way, where the Jedi are able to 180 Darth Maul. If you can be basically facing um, your friend in that fight, that's the most advantageous position for uh, the two of you to be in. And uh, Darth Maul clearly knows that. If you're the person fighting two people, then the strategy is to try to create a triangle. You want to move from that center position and you want to become the, the peak of a triangle with these two people here. And you see that done right away. After that point, I think you can see that uh, the Jedi are trying to maintain that strategy. So if you have the acrobatic abilities and the power of a Jedi, uh, flipping to get there, okay. When you have a sword alone, you use the sword to both offend and defend. But once you have an auxiliary like a shield, then you're using that shield primarily for defense. This fight does a great job of using it for offense when, uh, when they do that trap. You're using the sword to defend as well, especially on your outside line. They use the sword, instead of stabbing the man on the ground in the back with the sword, they use the sword to drape a sheet over his head when he could have killed him five times. Not the choice I would make. <laughs> 
realism, uh, at least being grounded in that realism, is what makes the, the fights that much more interesting to an audience. While an audience is never going to understand all the, the finite details that are being done in a sword fight, what I've found uh, in over 20 years of doing this is that when the fight is grounded in a martial reality, it connects with the audience in a very different way. It's the kind of fight that makes them ooh and ah and gets them here and here. Thank you.